So this is the Maytech F411 flight controller right here. And it's made especially for fixed wing devices. So it's the F411 wing flight controller from Maytech. So if you were thinking of using it for a quadcopter, don't. One reason is it only has two motor outputs right here. These two pluses and those two minuses are the power for the two motors. And then you have S1 and S2, which are the two ports to the signal to the motor. Here's the specifications for it. There's four servo outputs here and a fifth one right here on S7. And then there's S1 and S2 for your motor signal outputs. So it goes S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, and S7. Those are all of the outputs. And then you have places to hook on, for example, an SBUS receiver right here. Or you could also hook on a PPM receiver up here on ST1 and there's some information here on how to do it. I'm going to be using PPM for my project which is the FT Legacy RC plane which I got from Flight Test and put it together and I put this flight controller in it and it's going to have twin engines and differential thrust so that's what I'm going to configure. Now I can't answer questions on other types of receivers and that because I just don't know. I've just only hooked up the PPM but I'm sure configuring the SBUS shouldn't be too hard for example. There's a chart down here where it shows you SBUS right here and it says SBUS port and then it shows you what you can use for the GPS and if you want to use FreeSky smart port or a VTX control you could use ST1 as well for that. But this chart gives you that. It gives you F port, PPM, Crossfire, and Spectrum, which again, I don't know how to hook these up. I haven't tried them, but they're right there if you want to use them. You can go ahead and connect everything up according to whatever you pick in the mixer. In this example, they have a wing pick, so that means your servos would be on S3 and S4. That would be S3 and S4 right there. That's where the signals are for the servos. And then you got voltage and ground. The voltage is normally 5 volts, but you can increase it to 6 volts by soldering this jumper right here. There's also a place to hook up an LED strip right here and a buzzer. Let's get into updating the firmware first. So I'm going to go ahead and download the firmware from Firmware Releases, the configuration tool, and this thing called ZA Dig, which is something you can use to make your USB port work if it isn't working. And then this is a link I just showed you that had all the information on it. I'll put all four of these links under the video. Let's do this one, configuration releases. So when we click that, it takes us in here and we can download the latest configuration tool, which would be this one right here, this Windows version which is what I'm using. So that's now downloading down here. Okay, then another link I had was for the firmware releases. So let's click that and let's get the latest release, which in this case is 2.0. And the board you're looking for is the Maytech F411 hex right here. So let's download that. And then finally, let's get ZA Dig. It's kind of strange where you find it. You scroll down through here. It's actually this little link right here. It's easy to miss. And these are the directions on how to use it. So let's click that and we'll go down here and download that. There it is. Okay, so we got all three things downloading. Okay, so let's go ahead and unzip the configuration tool. So I'm just going to right click it and say open a new window. So I opened a second window and this is what's in the zip folder. I'm just going to take that folder and drag it back into here. And you can see that is unzipping. And now we have the configuration tool in that folder. We can close this one, open the configuration. There's the iNav configurator, and we can run that. PC doesn't like it, you know, Windows 10, so just do more info and then say run anyway. And it should open up. Okay, what we want to do is hold down this button right here on the F411 wing and then plug in the USB cable to the computer. And when you do, you should get a solid red light instead of a blinking light. If this is the first time you've ever flashed, it won't work because it won't pick up on the proper USB port. So while it's in the USB firmware mode right here, after pushing the button and plugging it in, it's a good time to run ZA Dig. And you have to go to Options and then List All Devices. Pull this down and look for STM32 bootloader. And then you go ahead and you can install a driver. Now I've already installed it, so it's asking me to reinstall. I could hit the button, just go ahead and reinstall. 
Successful. All right, so that's done. Now we're just going to continue to leave the board plugged in and we're going to go back to the iNav configurator while it's still plugged in. We're not going to connect though, we're just going to do the firmware flasher. We'll bring up the firmware flasher and we want the uh, full chip erase and no boot sequence. That's good. Okay, so now we're going to load the firmware right here and we're going to have to find it. So we know it's on the desktop and it was under new folder and there's the firmware right there the hex file open it and then click flash firmware and you can see it's erasing right now and now flashing verifying and it's done and now you can see the lights are starting to blink so it's not in the firmware mode anymore and it's got new firmware we'll go ahead and disconnect from our USB port all right now we can go ahead and plug it back in. The light should start blinking again. And we should be able to connect. And there it is. And you can see if I move the board that it rocks around on the screen. Okay, now we'll get into the configuration part. iNav has got pretty good at being user friendly now. You notice right up here it says mixer not configure, use mixer to set it up. So let's go ahead and go to the mixer. And right now we've got a quadcopter there and we don't want that because this board doesn't even work with quadcopter. So let's go ahead and change this to airplane right here for the platform. Now this is where we could pick a flying wing if we wanted to and use three and four servos. But we can come down here and there's a lot of choices. You could have a flying wing with differential thrust. That would be good for a Kraken, for example. Now, I'm going to be using a standard airplane, an airplane with differential thrust right here. So that'll be good for the FT Legacy. I'll pick that, and that's what it looks like. And you can see my ailerons are on S4 and 5. My rudder is on 6. And 3, the first servo output, is for the elevator. Okay, let's load and apply. It says it overwrites. We'll save and reboot. Now, it doesn't reconnect when it reboots. It says something about failed to close serial port. No big deal. It still worked. Just go ahead and hit connect again. Okay, now we've got another message. PWM output is disabled. Motors and servos will not work. Use the configuration tab. So we just go to the configuration tab and enable the motor and servo output. And then save. Connect again. All right, let's go ahead and go back to configuration. I like to enable don't spin motors when armed. After all, it is a plane. We don't need the motors spinning up on us when we arm it at all, right? We could select our PPM output as well down here. How about this one? We'll just do PPM RX input. Oh, well, let me save that. Reconnecting, going to the ports tab. I still have a problem because I think there's a note for PPM that tells you that this won't work unless you do something else. It says, with CPU base serial ports enabled, but can be used for PPM input with CPU based serial ports disabled. We're going to have to disable the CPU based serial ports before we can use SD1 for PPM. So we're going to go back to configuration. Where do we do that? I think it's down the bottom here. Enable CPU based serial ports. Okay, we want to turn that off and save. All right, connect again. Now back to the ports tab. All we need to do is basically make sure the GPS is on. And we can also turn serial port one off here. This is a uh, UART one can be off and we can use that for something else. And that's it, go ahead and save it. Go back to configuration and it's all set up now for PPM. Now you can see that we could enable a GPS, but I don't have one plugged in right now. If you were going to connect a GPS, you would do it by connecting it right in this area, RX2 and TX2 right here. So you could connect that for your GPS. Compass we're not going to use on the plane because we don't need it. In fact, it just confuses things. So we're not going to connect the compass. But if you did, it would be on these two up here. SCL and SDA, that's where the compass would go. And of course, you would need your voltage, 5 volts for either the GPS or the compass, 5 volts and ground. And if you look back at the ports tab, you can see the GPS is on UART2. So that's that TX2 and RX2. 
TX2 and RX2 right here. And remember when you're connecting a GPS, the TX goes to the RX and the RX goes to the TX. So just keep that in mind. Okay, then you would go to your receiver tab and if you had your receiver hooked up and bound to your transmitter, you could see this working and you could pick your channel map, which I usually pick this one. And you could also enable RSSI if you're going to use that on whatever channel you want. I use channel 8 a lot because my RSSI comes over a PPM channel. I'm not using analog RSSI, I'm using it over the channel 8 from the receiver. Okay, so for the failsafe, I think I'd want return to home for the failsafe right there. That's what I'm going to do. For a plane, that's probably the best thing. We don't want to just land, that wouldn't be good, or drop out of the air. Okay, let's go to the Modes tab now. For Angle Mode, we can set it right there and put it on the channel that we want. Channel 5 is fine for me. Okay, now Horizon Mode. Let's add that. Let's put Horizon Mode up here. So you'll have to set up a switch on your radio for Channel 5. So when the switch is in the first position, you won't have either of these, and that will basically put you in acro mode, where you don't have any stabilization. And then you flip it up once, and you'll get angle mode, which is stabilized mode. And then if you flip it again, you'll get horizon mode, which is stabilized mode with a little bit of acro at the extent. So if you move your sticks towards the outer section, you'll get more of an acro type feel to give you more control, but in towards the middle, it'll be stabilized better. I think that's about all I set there. You could, you could put in a return to home switch if you wanted to. Okay, I think return to home doesn't appear until you have a GPS set up. So I won't put in return to home, but I think when the GPS is enabled, it appears down here at the bottom where you can set it to a switch if you want to. Okay, so now let's take a look at the OSD. It will appear right here. You can go ahead and configure that. Now this board comes with an OSD already on it. It's the MW OSD. And you can select these things to put whatever you want onto the screen. So say you wanted a uh, heading. You could turn that on. You can see the heading appeared right there. Or you can turn it off. So those are the things that will appear on the screen. There's some common things that most people use right here. You can just go with that or add whatever you want to do. I also like to choose my settings over here. I like Imperial, so I said Imperial, but you may not want to. I'm going to leave the video format on Auto, so it'll pick either NTSC or PAL according to the camera. So I'll just go ahead and save that. So the OSD is very easy to configure as well. Okay, let's go back to configuration. Now, if you have your board turned around backwards like I did, you might want to change the yaw. So I went ahead and made this 180 degrees right here for my board. So I'm just changing the yaw there. I'll go ahead and save that. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the servos tab right here. Just the way the, the hardware was configured on the plane, the way the servos were set up, it was working in reverse as far as the feedback for the flight controller and on the radio. So rather than change the radio, I just went ahead and just did this and reverse them. So it's handy they have those reverse features right there. So that changes S4 and 5. S3 was my elevator and S6 was my rudder. And those refer to those pins on the board if you remember. These pins right here, S3, S4, S5, and S6. That's what they're talking about right there. These right here. S1 and 2 are for the motors. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Now on the motors tab right here, once you get everything hooked up, you can calibrate your motors. You can turn them on here, make sure the props aren't on, turn them on, uh, run the master all the way up, plug in your ESCs, and they'll go beep, beep, and then just pull these down, and that does your throttle calibration. Not doing that right now because my motors aren't hooked up, but I just thought I'd mention it. So here I have the controller with the receiver connected, and my radio is bound to the receiver, and I have everything set up on the radio. So you can see when I move the aileron right here, you can see that moving for roll. Then we have pitch right here. You might even hear the plane moving because I have the controller in the plane. This is the yaw for the rudder, throttle, 
And then we have channel 5, which remember was the switch. So stabilize mode. there's stabilize mode. Horizon mode. There's horizon mode that we set up in the modes tab. Stabilize mode. And that's on channel 5, channel as you mode. can see. And then channel 8 here, that's the RSSI channel, which I have set up here. And I just configured my Easy UHF receiver to put the RSSI on channel 8. So it's coming right in through there. Let's see if I can turn. See, that's my pan servo and my tilt servo, which is on 11. So 10 and 11 is used for that. And I didn't have to configure anything in, in INAV for that because I have those connected directly to the receiver and not going through the flight controller. So the pan and tilt isn't connected to that at all. Well, 12 was returned to home. Right here, I have a GPS hooked up too, so that's a bonus. So I have return to home as well. What I didn't show you was the calibration right here. By the way, you don't have to do the compass calibration because there is no compass for a plane. We're not using that. Just the accelerometer calibration. And you hit calibrate accelerometer six times. And you put the board in the upright position. So you click it, put it in the upside down position, click it again, turn it facing to the right. Then keep doing that up, left, down until you get it all calibrated and when you're done you'll see these values down here these three values will change from I think it's 4096 I believe it is to something different if they just remain on 4096 it means you didn't complete the calibration properly and mixer you can see is just the way we did it before the way I showed you uh, let's look at modes this is still set up the same way I showed you with everything on switch 5 mode. you can see this pointer moves mode. when I flip the switch like that okay here's the nav return to home that popped in after I enabled the GPS and I just set it so that when I flip the switch over here you can see this pointer moves up into that area to enable return to home whether it works or not I don't know to be tested I think I made a CLI change and the reason for that was the RSSI. I wanted to set the range for the RSSI to work better because it was only showing 81%. So I went into the CLI right here and I typed in set RSSI underscore max equal 81 and I saved it. So if like your upper range is 81, then you would do set. You, this gets it to be 100. So RSSI underscore max and then put equal space equal space and then whatever it is on your OSD if it says 81 percent you want hundred just put 81 percent and that'll make the max appear to be a hundred and there's also a min like if your min wasn't zero it was showing 20 you could change this right here to min and then say equals 20 and then it would set that so you got zero to a hundred the cool thing about the min-max settings is you can now handle inverted RSSI signals by making the min high and the max low. So that's how that works. But anyway, that's the general overview. Now this doesn't probably answer every question you'd ever want to know. There's a lot to iNav. You might have to get onto the, the GitHub iNav wiki and look up some stuff to, if you have other things you're going to do. I don't know all the nuances to this. I only know what I'm using. I just have my GPS and my receiver hooked up to it and my servos. So I hope this helps. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe because I'll probably do some more videos on this subject to get into some of the different areas in more depth. Especially if you ask questions and you want to know more. Alright, talk to you later.